say and apply it to your boo, it's not for booze, it's not for bays, it's not for friends with benefits, it's not for none of them. Adultery is for married couples. But singles, I guarantee you, if you peek in from the periphery, you'll learn some stuff that'll keep you from dealing with adultery once God blesses you with a spouse. Uh, I got a lot of ground to cover in a little bit of time, and I know you're trying to get home to Empire, and I'm still sick, so I can throw up at any time. Amen. So it's going to be quick. It's going to happen right over here. So you just you, you need to pray the hardest. Pray the hardest. Pray the hardest. I am so sick, but y'all wouldn't know, because I got to do my assignment. Here it is. Tonight, we're going to be expository and let the text speak. Yeah. Preachers, you ever read a passage and you, and you read it in your devotion? You say, ooh, mm -hmm. I'm going to preach that one day. <laughs> the first time I read this proverb, this message leaped out of my spirit. The show, the title, the drama. I said, oh my God, look at what the text says. In Proverbs chapter, of uh, the fifth proverb, verse number one. I'm reading from the NLT. Look at your Bible and look on the screen. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will learn to be discreet and will store up knowledge. Isn't it crazy that the preamble of this proverb is, 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 is warning and a word from God? God always gives you a word before the situation emerges. But he expects you to adhere to the word once you're in the situation. Stop ignoring God's voice before you get in, but then begging him for a word to get you out. How come you don't let God in on the choosing process, but you always invite him to deal with your mess that you made? Tell your neighbor, pay attention tonight, because this word is going to save you from the tabloids. It's going to save you from the heartbreak. It's going to save you from looking crazy on the internet. Tell your neighbor, well, take good notes. Uh-huh. Because if you don't need this word tonight, put it in the freezer, because in about five years, you're going to have to unthaw this word and put it in the microwave, and it's going to bless your life. Pay attention. Experience is the best teacher, but it don't have to be your experience. such a passion about relationships because they didn't teach it like this when I was a kid so I lost the whole generation of us that went through divorce, infidelity, drama because they wouldn't keep it real in church so when I saw couples married for 50 years, nobody said this is how we did it I said the devil is a liar, I'm breaking generational curses, I'm going to bring back marriage back, I'm going to bring back family back my children ain't going to face what I face is there anybody in here who says I'm a curse breaker here's the setup, verse number 3 the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey and her mouth you better write something is smoother than oil uh, but the result is as bitter as poison, sharp as a double-edged sword. I told you I'm not preaching tonight. I'm expository. The text don't talk. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. One way ticket to hell. Mess with her. It's in the text. She does not care about the path to life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't even realize where it leads. Who wow. can I talk to you? Wow. Satan is a master at deception. Yeah. Her lips are sweet as honey, her mouth smoother than oil, but the result is bitter as poison. Can I tell you a secret? Your mistress, she ain't real. Your mistress is an illusion. They personify everything that is right while being all wrong. You know the person commenting on the relationship always got the right answers. Because they're not in the relationship. They have no emotional equity involved. It's easy to say what Kobe should have did. You ain't on the court. So your mistress is saying stuff like, if I was your spouse, man, I would cherish you and I would take care of you. 
This is close as I can get to being a woman. That's close as I got right there. So just let me act this out as best as I can. <laughs> if I were your spouse, she don't know what she got. Shut up! The mistress has no responsibility. She don't share any bills. She didn't birth or raise your kids. She doesn't wash your dirty clothes. She doesn't know all your issues. All she got to do is be a freak in the sheets. And now you putting this mistress on a pedestal that she ain't even earned. Tell somebody, don't lose a diamond chasing glitter. Say, you let me get here. You shouldn't let me get here. I'm going to preach tonight. Uh, 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 stop giving total credit for partial behavior. <laughs> Verse number seven. I'm not preaching tonight. The text is talking. Now, my now, so now my sons, listen to me. Never stray away from what I'm about to say. All y'all who are so deep. All y'all who think you can play with fire, even though the Bible says you can't take fire into your bosom and not be burnt. Verse number eight is for you. He doesn't say pray. He doesn't say fast. He doesn't say get a prayer partner. He says, run from her. <laughs> Didn't say speak in tongues. Didn't say do a 21 day. Didn't say buy a book. If you do, you will lose your honor. And you'll hand it over to merciless people everything you have achieved in your life. Strangers will obtain your wealth. And someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. Afterward, you will moan and groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. I'm not preaching. The text is talking and you will say, how I hated discipline if I only had not demanded it my own way. Yes. Verse number 13. Why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to those who gave me instruction? I came to the brink of utter ruin and now I must face public disgrace. Uh, 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 Satan always shows you the merchandise but he never shows you the cost. <laughs> Satan always shows you the menu, but he hides the prices. You ever been to a fancy restaurant where they don't have prices on the menu? I'm like, uh-uh. Like, How much is that lobster? Oh, it's market price. What's that? Because I can't enjoy it because I know a bill's coming. Satan always shows the bait, but he always hides the hook. Don't mess with this fine, smooth, talking adulteress. If you do, you'll lose your honor. Do you realize the adulterer doesn't love you? In fact, it's the opposite. If somebody knows your situation, and they know you're married, and they try to holler at you anyway, they don't love you. It's the opposite. They're telling you your wife ain't nothing. They're saying your husband ain't nothing. They're saying your ministry ain't nothing. They're saying your character is nothing. They're saying all you are is something for me to lay down with. So if you keep messing around, somebody else is going to be blessed with your good faithful spouse who you crept on. It, it got quiet. And you got to know when messages like this, quiet, I'm attracted to quiet. Quiet means I'm right where I need to be. The devil is a liar. Uh-uh. I'm not going to have no other man playing catch with my kids. <laughs> Come here, Brooklyn. Are you kidding me? No. Somebody else picking up your children from school, enjoying the fruit of your labor. You will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. How do you, how you do that conversation? 
How you come home to your spouse? Yeah. After creeping. <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you took a physical for work. And the physical showed up that you have a disease that your spouse didn't give you. How do you, how do you open up that conversation? Uh, uh, but, 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 but we use protection. Protection only protects you from sexually transmitted diseases sometimes. I'm almost done. Uh, but, 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 but condoms don't protect you from spiritually transmitted diseases. Oh God, that was worth me coming right there. I would tweet that. I would tweet that. Uh, protection don't protect from every STD. Yeah, you know there are spiritually transmitted diseases. Are you serious? You drunk the Kool-Aid? You drunk the Kool-Aid? When they told you it was just sex, you actually believe that? You thought it was that? You thought you were so grown and so mature that you could become one with somebody and not transmit nothing? Uh, uh, hashtag, it's never just sex. Okay, y'all looking at me crazy. Uh, Paul, back me up. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 15. It's on the screen. I knew you'd be too frozen by this point in the message to turn. Just look on the screen. Amen. I set you up real nice. Uh, 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 let's look at the text. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, don't read it. Y'all like, y'all can't read. What does it say? He becomes one body with her. For the scriptures say, the two are united unto one. But the one person who's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Uh, 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 that's not the clincher. Verse number, verse number uh, 18. Here it is. Run away from sexual sin. Well, all is sin. All sin is sin. All sin is sin. Your grandma said that, but the Bible didn't say that. The text says, no other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. Next time somebody tell you all sin is sin, uh, that ain't what the text says. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Do you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. In sex, there is an exchange. When you sleep with someone, all of you sleeps with them. Mind, body, soul, spirit. For the past six months, I just don't be happy in nothing, man. I go to work, I ain't happy. That ain't your depression. That's Jimmy's depression. Man, I'm feeling suicidal, man. I'm angry a lot. Like, I pop off quick. I say praise the Lord here, but I pop off real quick. I ain't never been angry like this. My parents didn't raise me to be this man. Uh, that ain't your anger. That's Keisha. Uh -huh. Can I take it a step further? I promise you I'm going to let it go. So now, in order to cope, oh, God. God, God told me somebody gonna get free right here. He told me. In order to cope, what you do is you desensitize your heart from feeling. Yeah. Can't nobody deal with the emotions that come with it and, 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 and you walking away from me and, and, and me being one with you. And then as soon as it's done, you're not feeling me and you don't call me, but then you text me when you wanna when you wanna get on top of me again, and, and that feels good physically, but it don't feel good spiritually. Uh, Paul said, I find the wall that when I would do good, evil is with me all the time. So, so my body's saying yes, but my mind's telling me no. Uh, 